talking to close to 10,000 people at the MGM Grand Arena, and I was facing my own personal attack. By the way, I'm just being authentic and transparent to you guys. Please don't judge me. There's something I'm about to say on stage why I'm getting attacked right now that's possibly so profound it's gonna impact and change people's lives, and I cannot succumb to these attacks. How will you mature through those attacks? So, you wanna become a faith-based, first-generation cash flow millionaire? Well, God got a warning for you. Where? I'll share with you three points here from the book of Proverbs in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad Scripture Series, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking like, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapali here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And if you haven't done so already, our next goal here for this YouTube channel is to get to 150,000 subs. And again, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because we want to give a $5,000 check to a church, charity, or nonprofit once we cross 150,000 subs. So please help us do so on behalf of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube community. All right, so let's get right into it. So a lot of people have been saying, man, I'm so glad that you've been sharing with us from a biblical perspective why it's okay to have thoughts about having success in your life, having wealth in your life, having money in your life. So many times I run across faith-based believers that say, man, you know, it's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man going to heaven, et cetera, et cetera, that nonsense. But I will say though, there is a prescription and there is a warning for you to follow if you want to have that result in your life while well, here on earth. It's taken from the book of Proverbs. And you know, I'm a big fan of Proverbs. Why? Is written by who is known as the wisest and richest king who ever lived, King Solomon. At the young age, he asked not for bigger armies, he asked not for more money, he not asked for wealth, he asked God for wisdom when he took over rule over God's people. And God said, you know what, I'm gonna fill you with wisdom. So in the book of Proverbs, King Solomon is writing a letter to his children. He's saying, here are God's commands. Here is what God has filled with me with wisdom throughout my life, throughout my rule. And since I want you to be successful, since I want you to continue on this legacy of which I've created, I want you to take on these proverbs, these rules. And he's sharing with him a story in Proverbs here. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 7. We'll read a story here of how this can apply to not only, which the obvious thing here is uh, a young man walking through the street and seeing what happened, but it's how that applies to finances and your levels of success that you're going to achieve as you progress in your career, your business, and your investments, and your journey, if you want to honor God with your finances. So, King Solomon talks about to know God's orders, and know his commands and commandments, to obey his orders and his commandments, and to keep his orders and commandments. Again, to know, to obey, and to keep. So how many times do you guys know somebody that knows a lot about a lot of things, but not very financially successful? You know why? Because they don't obey those things that they learn. They don't keep those things that they learn, but they just know a lot of things. They got opinion on a lot of things, but in terms of execution, implementation, and experience, very small. But it's another thing to say, you know what? It's one thing to know it, to follow it, and by obeying it, and it's also by obeying it and the experiences that unravel as you obey it, is to keep it because there are new things that get unlocked along the way. How many times have you ever uh, either played a video game or back in the day I used to read these books where uh, if you make this decision, you jump to chapter 65. And uh, based on what you read in the, uh, chapter 65, you make another decision, give you a, a few options. Jump to 75, you say yes, or jump to 95, you say no, and then you jump to that chapter. So such as these things when it comes to God's commandments, you want to know them, to obey them, and to keep them as well. I'll give you a quick example. How should you treat God's word? Well, in Proverbs chapter seven, he talks about treasuring God's word, to keep those as a treasure. Now, when we're gone in Las Vegas, we were gone last week in Las Vegas, we had the craziest annual convention in Las Vegas. We're the first company to do a company size event in Las Vegas. Who do we have out? We had Iron Mike Tyson show up. We had uh, uh, an awards night, which was hosted by Mario Lopez. Uh, we had uh, a, a crazy uh, a comedian from who I found out later on was from Rolling Meadows, Illinois, my home state in, in Illinois. His name is Sebastian Maniscalco, and I think he called me out in front of everybody. He attempted to roast me, and I seen a whole audience 
uh, kind of had my back and rallied against it and, uh, and had something to say to him too as well and to let him know, hey man, you pick with one of us, you pick on an entire company. Uh, then we also had uh, Nikki Jam come out and perform too as well. We had a great evening of not only entertaining and educating our agents, but also just being able to get back together after two years and not being together because of COVID and the pandemic and the lockdowns. But along my way there, I ordered a one of one Patrick Mahomes card. And uh, along the way, I was like, you know what? They didn't deliver by Saturday and we're leaving on Sunday. They didn't deliver on Saturday. As they said it would deliver on Saturday. I'm, I'm freaking out what's going to go on because this is a one of one card of Patrick Mahomes. And I'm thinking, I hope it's just not sitting on my porch. And the whole week I was worried that it was sitting on my porch. Thankfully, yes, it was sitting on my porch, but it was stuck in the mailbox. And uh, this is what came in the mail, thankfully. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is a Patrick Mahomes one of one card. Uh, you guys see that one of one, and on the back, it's uh, number one. Uh, number one, two as well, here, right here in the back. But right here, it's a one of one card. There's only one of these made in the world, okay? And it's in this protective case. Okay, so I got this raw. I'm about to send it out to either Becky or PSA to get graded. So therefore they can grade it, you know, PSA 8, eight 9 or 10, but there's only one of these in the entire world. So why do I share that? If I, as a sports card collector, is willing to protect and keep and make sure this is safe and making sure that it's uh, not wrinkled or, or, or cut or damaged in any way, to make sure it's great because it's a valuable asset. Well, to me, it's an asset, it may not be to you, but to me, it's a valuable asset, a collectible that might be worth a lot of money one day. But it depends on how clean this card is and how immaculate the uh, grading company uh, uh, deems it to be and how well Patrick Mahomes play uh, his, throughout his rest of his career. We protect it. Why? Because we value it. There's many things I collect. I collect uh, gold, gold bars, silver bars. Uh, there's many things I invest in businesses that I invest in and I protect those. I read the financials, I have a conversation with the executives, I have a conversation with the people that are uh, dealing with me, these precious metals. Why? Because I value it and I want to make sure I'm putting my money in the right things and I get the return on investment that I hope to make by putting my money in those type of things. So why is that important? Well, are you treating God's word the same way? Are you protecting it? Are you knowing it? Are you obeying it? And are you keeping it as you would any valuable that you can tangibly have in your hands at any given point. So let's go on to Proverbs chapter seven and let's read how King Solomon says and how to value, keep, obey, and know God's word. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter seven and uh, let's jump to Proverbs chapter seven verses uh, two through three and it reads like this. Keep my commandments and live. Keep my teaching as an apple of your eye Bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablet of your heart. So think about that. God is asking you to treat it like a valuable. Now he's going to explain why here, and we'll explain why in a second. But if you want to go about being a faith-based millionaire, God's warning for you through King Solomon is to treat his word, to know his word, to obey his word, to keep his word, and treat it like a valuable. You wouldn't want your valuable broken or stolen or damaged, would you? You wouldn't flippantly leave it on your porch for somebody else to take it and have one of these porch pirates steal your Amazon goods. Well, if you're willing to protect your Amazon goods from being stolen by some porch pirate to steal your package, well, how come you don't treat God's word the same way? So number one, you have to treat God's word as a valuable, to know God's word, to see what God wants in your life through his word, to execute the game plan that you have in his head that's been inspired through your heart and spirit through God's a destiny that he has and purpose he has in your life and to be able to keep that as you have different levels of success or failures along the way. So let's take a look at point number two. Along the way, anticipate temptations. <laughs> now, I love this portion because he talks about what temptations look like in a story of a young man walking down the street and what he will encounter walking down the street if He's not aware or anticipating distractions. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 7, verses 10 through 20, a little long, but please indulge me and follow along with me and read if you can. And behold, the woman meets him, dressed as a prostitute, wily of heart. She is loud and wayward. Her feet do not stay at home. Now in the street, now in the market, in every corner she lies in wait. She seizes him and kisses him, and with bold face she says to him, I had to offer sacrifice and today I paid my vows. So now I have come out to meet you 
to seek you eagerly, and I have found you. I have spread my couch with coverings, colored linens from Egyptian linen. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Verse 18, come, let us fill our love till morning. Let us delight ourselves with love. Verse 19, for my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. <laughs> Man. Verse 20, he took a bag of money with him, and at full moon, he will come home. Hmm. By the way, before we get into the insight of what this story can share with us, I mean, just look at the literal understanding of what this looks like. I mean, would you want to date a girl like this? Ladies, would you like to date a man like this? Would you want to have a wife like this? Do you want to have a husband like this, that while you're gone, they're skipping out on you? That, that, that while you're doing your best to build your future, to have a family, to live your best life, do you want relationships like this, business part like this, scheming out on you and scamming you along the way? See, this scripture applies to not only your personal relationships, but I also believe it relates to the business partners you choose, the clients that you decide to obtain, the way you go about your business, the way you go about earning your money. Do you want it like a process? Hey, listen, come get me. I'm a quick opportunity. I'm a quick opportunity. I have no values. I have no principles. Come get me. Throw your money my way. I'll show you short-term success. I'll show you, man, a great night. But man, in the morning, you might be hurting. Next week, next year, you'll be regretting this conversation. You'll be regretting this relationship. You'll be regretting this indulgence. Why? Because you gravitated about knowing God's word. You gravitate away from just obeying it and keeping it along the way. So again, treat God's word as a valuable. God's warning to you is, please treat my word as valuable as you have anything else in your life. Number two, please anticipate that along the way I can't fight these problems for you. I can't avoid these problems because this is the things you're experiencing here on earth. But you need to anticipate these temptations. Number three, are you really out for short-term success or long-term success? Are you here for short-term pleasure? Because if so, then you just might experience long-term suffering, and that's God's warning to you. Let's read Proverbs chapter 7, verse 22 through 27. It reads like this. All at once he follows her as an ox goes to slaughter or as a stag is caught fast till an arrow pierces its liver as a bird rushes into a snare. He does not know that it will cost him his life. 24. And now, O oh sons, listen to me. Be attentive to the words out of my mouth. Let not your heart turn aside to her ways. Do not stray into her paths. For many a victim she has laid low, and all her slain are a mighty throng. Last one. Her house is a way to Sheol, going down to the chambers of death. Wow. Sounds like a great future, huh? <laughs> I'm laughing at it now. But I tell you this, it is not a laughing moment when you actually find yourself in that situation. And I'm daring some of you guys, watch what happens. I'm challenging some of you guys, watch what happens if you follow the path of short-term pleasure, quick money, quick, fast, this, that's right? That's why last Sunday, our Bible study was that faith-based millionaires do not get rich quick because this is one of the values and principles of which they follow because they avoid the short-term pleasure. How many people have you seen get caught up in scandals because short-term they were having fun? But next thing you know, boom, it's on the internet. Boom, it's a sex tape. Boom, uh, they get taken down. Politics get taken down because of the relationships that they're having and they get exposed. Why? Because they're following God's premise. They're not knowing his word. They're not obeying his word and they're definitely not keeping his word. And the challenge to many of you is this. As you're watching this video and you choose to follow it towards the end of this video, <laughs> the challenge with you now is, now you kind of know it. The challenge for you is, are you willing to obey it? and are willing to keep it. So if that's you, put in the comment section below that I am knowing, that I'm obeying and keeping God's word. Put in the comment section below, I am knowing, obeying, and keeping God's word. Put it in the comment section below to affirm this belief and prayer in your life. A few questions I want you to ask you as we wrap up here. Assume that as you reach new levels in your life, when there's new levels in your life, there's other devils that want to take you out. You see, the devil has very many friends too as well. As much God and as Jesus has his angels concerning you, defending you and fighting for you on behalf when you call upon his name, guess what? The devil wants to take you out here on earth and he has many friends too as well. 
cloaked in many different ways, different situations, different people. So just know that as you reach other levels in your life, as you're more discerning, also there's other devils looking to take you out. So therefore, again, to reiterate, to know God's word, to obey God's word, to keep God's word, as you're going to these different levels. You know, I was uh, on stage uh, uh, throughout this week talking to close to 10,000 people at the MGM Grand Arena. And I was facing my own personal attacks, family attacks, uh, situational attacks, health attacks, fatigue attacks, many different attacks were going my way. You know why? The way I took it. If there's such a message that we are sharing on stage, again, we're the first company to hold a company size annual convention in Las Vegas since the reopening of Las Vegas. That there's so many different attacks going my way. But she says, you know what? I said, you know what? There's something I'm about to say on stage, why I'm getting attacked right now, that's possibly so profound, it's gonna impact and change people's lives, and I cannot succumb to these attacks. I gotta find a way to see it, to address it, to make a tough decision on God's behalf that he's using me in a way, just the way he's gonna use you in a mighty and powerful way. And uh, you just gotta understand, if there's another level you're facing that you're climbing towards, another devil may take you out, Understanding that it's not necessarily the people that you love and care about, although that may be a way that enemy is trying to use attacks against you through the people close to you, but just anticipate it. Um, question, ask yourself, how will you handle these temptations? How will you handle these attacks? Are you going to be short-term reactive to it? Or are you going to say, <laughs> ah, good, good one, devil, good one, enemy. I knew you are coming. Can't believe you used my daughter, my son, my kids, my health, my finances against me. No, I'm better than that. So how will you handle it? How will you mature through those attacks? How will you mature to those setbacks and failures? How will you mature? What's the good, the bad, the ugly? What's the formula for you to say, you know what? Here's how I'm going to take away from it. Here's how I need to anticipate next time the situation comes up. And then here's the ugly side of the situation here that we also have to address going forward. Last question you ask yourself here as we wrap up this video. How can, will, the people that you surround yourself with help? Are you surrounding yourself with the right mentors, coaches, battle buddies, whatever you want to call it? How can the people around you, or will they help you? How can they help you, and how will they help you? And if, the, if so, how? Because these things are coming your way, because God's warning is, if you want to do something mighty and powerful with your finances, with your career, with your business, to be able to use it to magnify God, to let God's word be known. To be able to say, you know what, I'm, all I'm doing is giving him glory. I'm just the messenger. I'm just the vessel. But you got to understand the enemy's trying to take you out to his work because the enemy doesn't want your message to be heard because if that enemy knows that your message can change lives and impact lives in a very positive way, he wants to do everything. The devil, the enemy, wants to do everything they can against you. Just follow Proverbs chapter 7. Understand that that's God's prescription for you. That's God's warning for you to avoid these things. Not only literally as you read it through scripture, by the way, just so you know, uh, as a man that's sadly been through divorce, has been, been through uh, blended family type of situations, when I read the scripture, Proverbs chapter 7, not only am I seeing the metaphorical explanation of it, but also understanding the literal explanation for it, because I'm thinking about myself, wow, I met a woman that way. Oh, wow, I met a woman that way. Wow, I'm just being authentic and transparent to you guys. Please don't judge me. Um, but I just went through my mistakes too as well, and I want to use the rest of my life to hopefully be an example to a young man, a young woman out there one day that's watching these videos to say, you know what, if this guy screwed up his entire life and still was able to pull through because God had favor upon his life, as God has favor upon your life, and as a destiny called upon and purpose called upon your life, what happened to him, well shoot, it can happen to me, it can happen to you. So that being said, guys, before I wrap up, I want you to watch these two videos. This video right here, the fastest way for you to lose money. Also, this video here and how this book in the Bible made me a millionaire and how it can make you a millionaire to a faith-based millionaire on top of that too as well. So with that being said, guys, please, I love knowing your thoughts, your comments, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, put it in the comment section below. I do my very best to get back at you. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. I'm your money smart guy from Dallas, Texas. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys.